Welcome to the Dwig America podcast. And now your host, Todd Dwiggins. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Dwig America podcast. I am your host, Todd Dwiggins. On today's podcast, I'm going to talk about the top five performers who have died that I'd like to see, I would have liked to have seen in concert. And also posing a question based on this. How come we could send a man to the moon and then I'll come up with a question to go after that. So how come we could send a man to the moon, but, and then you can come up with your own. Okay. Top five performers who have passed away that I would have liked to see in concert. Now let's see. One, two, three, four of these performers were all alive during my lifetime, and theoretically, I could have seen them, though I probably would have been young to see some of them. But anyway, here we go. These are in no particular order. So, number one, the man in black, Johnny Cash. Now, I'm not a huge country guy, but Johnny Cash kind of crossed several genres. He was country, he was early rock and roll, he was rhythm and blues. Uh, Johnny had soul to him. Johnny was not the greatest singer. He didn't have the best voice. Some people really don't like his voice, but he had soul. He had, there was feeling behind uh, his music. And so I loved, I love hearing Johnny Cash. It just gives me a feeling of someone that's been there, experienced these things, he had a lot of baggage, a lot of things to go through. Uh, I just think Johnny Cash live would have been amazing. Maybe not at Folsom Prison, but it still would have been cool to see Johnny Cash live. Number two, Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen, if you don't know. Freddie Mercury, he had a voice that was amazing. The cool thing about Freddie Mercury and Queen in general that I always enjoyed. Some people obviously don't like Queen, but I liked Queen. I like Freddie Mercury because they could go from crazy little thing called love that was kind of a Elvis tribute, kind of that rock and roll bluesy kind of style. They could do uh, Stone Cold Crazy, which was a little like hard rock, heavy metal almost sounding. You could have Bohemian Rhapsody, which was operatic. He just had a way of crossing all those different genres and and just they did disco kind of music with uh, another one bites the dust. Just the 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 range that of the music of Queen, but particularly Freddie Mercury's voice is what I always uh, I loved, and I think that would have been cool. The energy he had on stage. If you ever have a chance. To see their performance at Live Aid in 1985, it's on YouTube. That's uh, that's uh, one of the great, great performances. Queen at Live Aid, Live Aid 1985. Shows you what a performer Freddie Mercury was. Okay, number three. The King, Elvis Presley. Again, Elvis had soul. Elvis had, there was feeling to his music, especially the old stuff, but I love... I just want to get my blood pumping to pop on a little C.C. Ryder. But he did gospel, blues, rock and roll, the whole thing. That's why he was the king of rock and roll. So I'm, I, my sister listened to Elvis. My aunt listened to Elvis. That's what really kind of got me going on Elvis. So I'm a big Elvis fan. I just think he has, he has soul. There's something there in his voice and in the music that... The transcends, it sort of touches something in me. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but Elvis. Love Elvis. Number four. Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra. He was the voice, and I know he comes from, he was putting out music from World War II into the, I believe, the 90s. 
just classic, just that voice, a smooth, smooth voice, kind of that nightclub voice, just kind of puts you in a good mood. Uh, I love, love listening to Frank Sinatra. Again, there's a, it's just very specific, puts you in a very specific time and place. Some people say, oh, it's grandma's music. Well, hey, grandma, your music was pretty good. Uh, so that's number four. I love Frank Sinatra. I don't listen to a lot of Frank Sinatra, but, you know, um, man, I, I, I can't even think of all the different uh, songs that I've heard that I'm like, ah, oh, classic Frank. Actually, I love uh, kind of his uh, jingle bells. It's kind of funny. It just, uh, it's not one that you say, oh, look, Frank Sinatra jingle bells, but Frank Sinatra's jingle bells. I love that one. That one, uh, it almost cracks me up. Uh, but enjoy some good Frank Sinatra. Number five, this one I changed. So I'll tell you my original and then I'll change you, tell you what I changed it to. So my original number five, again, these were in no particular order, but was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Now I love Mozart. I like that kind of classical music. Uh, it feels like it's inspired music. Uh, I love it. But when I think about it, Mozart, even if he was alive, you really wouldn't see much. He would probably be conducting. He was the composer. It's like John Williams. You don't go and watch John Williams, but you enjoy the music that he composed. But so that was my number five with Mozart. But as an artist, big time, one of my top five, definitely. But as far as someone to see perform live, John Denver. I could have seen John Denver, but I never got to see John Denver. But again, he has that sort of... I like musicians that you can tell their music comes from their heart, that they've, uh, they've written it, it's come from experience. And so John Denver kind of had, had that feeling to me. It feels like when he sings songs, especially the ones that you know he wrote, they come from a real place. And so John Denver, you put John Denver on and it's just good stuff. Uh, I, again, maybe cheesy, maybe soft, too soft for some people, but love it. So again, my five artists, performers who have passed away, who I would have liked to have seen again, Johnny Cash, Freddie Mercury, Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, and bumping off Mozart, John Denver. Those are my top five. Okay, and finally, today, the question I have, and this question will go on, I think, if not weekly, it's going to come up again and again, because I always have this question. How come we could figure out how to send a man to the moon in 10 years? We decided we were going to do it. And so in less than 10 years, basically, we decided we're going to send a man to the moon and bring him back basically going from scratch. We could do that. But we can't figure out how to make pizza or french fries or hamburgers, any kind of that junk food, healthy and taste exactly the same? Come on, man. Science, you are letting me down. You are letting me down. You're trying to figure out how to get the Mars because you want to try to see if, if we need to maybe someday populate another world? No. Let's fix the world we're on. It's not that hard. The world is very resilient. Nature is resilient. If we can figure out how to do this right, we can repair our own world without having to figure out a more complex plan to populate another world. Okay, let's take those resources maybe. And I'm all for going to Mars. I love that stuff. I love its exploration. But maybe let's figure out how to make this world a better place and start by making my cheeseburger, my Italian sausage, my pizza, my cake, my pie, you name it. If it's bad for you, cheese curds, 
can't we find a way to make them just as delicious, if not more so, and yet healthy? You're telling me that can't be done? Come on, science. Step it up. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, Anyone that has listened, shared, or whatever. Uh, If you know how to do an RSS feed or something like that, these little details I'm trying to figure out so that I can get this on iTunes and sort of grow an audience, I would appreciate any feedback to that. Again, at duegomaniac at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening and keep improving, keep getting better. Until next time, so long, everybody.